Okay, next we have Maria Gabriela Brody and Persano Piri from VMware. They'll be talking about shipping code faster in production without sacrificing security and maintaining consistency in CI/CD pipelines with Tanzu and Kubernetes. All right, take it off. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we hope to give you the confidence in shifting the security left of your build process. Uh, my name is Prasanna Uperi. I work as a senior platform architect at VMware. I have my colleague, uh, Maria Gabri, who will be driving the presentation portion of this uh, uh, segment, and then I'll take over uh, towards the demo portion. So with that, uh, I welcome Maria Gabri. Hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, being here. I am uh, a software, uh, I am a solution architect and VMware, and uh, my name is Maria Gabriella Brodi. I'm also a little bit excited about this. So without uh, further uh, delays, let's check what we want to talk about. And uh, as Prasanna said, we are going to talk about uh, the DevSecOps, so first of all, the, the, the problem space. Then we are going to talk about the tools and demo will, and will be done by Prasanna. And at the end of this, we are going to talk about the conclusions. Gabriel, you have to share your screen. Oops. Apology. Uh -huh. So share the screen. Sorry, I'm a newbie. <laughs> So this is uh, what we think when we think about the DevSecOps. So we are thinking that DevSecOps uh, is something where uh, everyone has uh, to have a say, quality assurance, security, operation, and uh, development. And uh, mainly, we want to say that uh, the um, Everything that we want to want to do around uh, DevSecOps uh, shouldn't be a burden a, a burden on top of the developer uh, uh, shoulder, and for this reason, we need to have that the security is embedded, is a guardrail and not a blocker for the speed, and compliance requirements should be automated in the DevSecOps pipeline, and this is why understanding tools and possibility is key. And the reason why we want to do this, it's because breaches are expensive. And pushing security to the left or closer to the creation of the code makes security a first-class citizen. And failing uh, uh, faster is cheaper. So there are many uh, advantages in uh, uh, introducing uh, DevSecOps. And uh, the adoption, uh, the advantages of the adoption can be measured across all of the following dimensions. The predictability of the system, and uh, we have more control over the environments. And the traceability, because auditing is core element of it. And also the uh, configuration is consistent and we can avoid drift. And uh, the automation is uh, at the center of it. And about trust, because everything is scanned and, and uh, signed. And so we have like all of these components that will uh, qualify for a good SECOP pipeline. Here, a reference of a pipeline that we can uh, use to go from code to a validation environment. Specifically, we are not going to talk about a full path to production because what we want to focus on is a specific aspect that are more centered toward the development experience. And at the end of this initial segment of the pipeline, we aim to achieve a trusted artifact that can be promoted to the next level. And specifically, we are going to focus on uh, the star stages and mainly on these highlighted concerns about the test, dependency, the scanning configuration, and the sign and trust. And we are uh, selecting tools that we can integrate for each specific purpose. 
And <clears throat> we know that quality and security cannot be enforced. They need to be part of the process from the beginning. Using a test-driven developer to development to drive our work, that is definitely a good practice. And it is key to understand what to test for. And so we need to have knowledge both of the business case and the security challenges. Open web as um, the Open Web Security Project offer a good uh, guidelines to understand which are the typical weaknesses to avoid. And security testing and static code analysis bring this to a little bit uh, faster, a, a, a little bit in advance. And we can check for flows uh, in the code. And also contract testing is a tool that has that help with maintain compatibility between version. Using test container, we can run unit test and anticipate a portion of the integration test at the build time. This is done by leveraging lightweight, throwaway instances of common database, web browser, and or anything else that you can actually run in a Docker container. Let's talk about building containers now. So without a building server uh, in the pipeline, what happens is that we are going to experience a situation like the one that's depicted here. A lot of different base images, a lot of different uh, dependency library, and the management of, of this is going to require a lot of effort. What do we want to achieve? So. To think about this, let's think about what we need. We need to have a clear billing of material for all the artifacts. And we need to think not only about the source code, but also the dependencies and the base image. In this way, we know exactly what is in every artifact. And if a CVE needs to be applied, and we need to reduce also the time to apply, to apply it. And, uh, where we want to be here is exactly where we want to be. A situation where the configuration drift is not a thing and consistency is in place. And that's very nice, but how do we achieve this? Well, using a build server that will take the committed code and build automatically the image. The core implementation is Paketo, that is a refined set of build packs that are based on the Cloud Native Build Pack project from Cloud Native Foundation. Images are built layer by layer to take advantage of caching and reusability. Applying a CVE or any patch is now fast and does not need to go back to the developer. Paketo offers curated base images for build and run, and it is constantly updated. And our build service is based on exactly on this. In terms of image repository and image scanning, we are uh, leveraging uh, the Harbor registry. So Harbor has uh, provides functionality for um, image repository, image scanning for CV and signing capability with a strong access control and audit. And finally, we use the mesh to configure the network layer and account for deployment of the services across namespaces on a multi-cluster environment that allows for uh, on-prem and multi-cloud infrastructure. In this case, to properly handle federation of meshes, security, and control over latency, we use the, the Tanzu service mesh. That is uh, our uh, product of choice at this point. And uh, other products that we have in this pipeline are Argo for uh, the deployment in the cluster and Jenkins for the pipeline job and customize to help with manage the promotion between environment of the artifacts. And with this, I'm going to pass uh, to Prasanna. And Prasanna, don't make my stay, same mistake, share the screen from the beginning. Thank you, Gabri. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, this part, fun part of the demo. Um, so before I get to the um, demo flow, I want to do a quick couple of things. 
So I want to um, push a code change that will uh, trigger our DevSecOps build pipeline. So let me commit. So what essentially I'm doing is I am simulating an application failure scenario by introducing a latency within our code, right? So what this does, this does two important things. One, it, um, it kicks off the whole build pipeline. It takes about three to five minutes to finish. Uh, once it finishes, we need um, uh, metrics of the application that we rely on to decide whether the, this, uh, this particular version of the deployment is um, error-free or not, whether we need to move forward or we need to roll back. Right? So that's one thing. And uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk about is our application itself. So if you look at, we have a very simple application. We, we are reading some records from the database, and we are just displaying those on the screen. Right? This is a simple application, nothing fancy. Right? So if you look at bottom of my screen, um, I am um, sending requests from my browser automatically every three seconds. And I see that my application is working fine. I see that HTTP status code is 200, right? Um, so where exactly this application is running, right? So we, we use a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster to deploy our application. And we use, um, as uh, Gabri mentioned, we use uh, Argo CD, the continuous deployment tool, to deploy Kubernetes deployments to Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. Right. So if you look at my screen, I have a replica set. Um, you know, I have a four pods that are running behind the replica set. And we have a canary service and we have a stable service. Right. So there are two most important things that of note is you look at my screen. So we have a revision one deployed. So I think it's a little bit small. So let me make it bigger. So hope you guys see, uh, you know, so we have our revision one of our application deployed. And then um, an image tag called signed underscore 22. So 22 is our build ID. Uh, so that, that is currently running in our, um, our Kubernetes cluster, right? So this is a happy path. Our application is running. It's green, you know, no issues, right? So the build that we did in the previous step, so that is going to introduce a problem to our application, right? So how how we we are going to handle that problem? I'll I'll uh, show you in the next steps, right? So let's go back to our demo flow, right? So first, uh, you know, we push the change to Git. It's already done. It's underway, right? And then uh, the outcome of that first step would be to kick off the build process, right? So build process, uh, we are using Tanzu build service powered by cloud native build packs and Paketo. Uh, what they do is they give you that secure base layer. Uh, as Gabri mentioned, security starts with uh, a secure base layer. Right? So Tanzu Build Service powered by Cloud Native Build Packs will give you that ability to take that uh, secure base and then put your application code on top of it and then build a container image. So there are two important things that happen during that process. I'll, I'll, I'll um, let you know what are those. And then, the outcome of that build process is uh, it kicks off the test containers. Test containers' job is to go ahead and run JUnit tests and integration tests to make sure that application is not having any issues functionally and also in terms of integration, right? So once that uh, test container portion is done, the outcome of that step would be to kick off uh, automatic image scanning and signing build process, right? So in that build process, um, so we take the image that is produced by the Tanzu build service, and then we um, push it to Harbor. So when we push it to Harbor, there are two things that happens, very important. It scans that uh, particular image, and then it also signs that particular image. I'll show you in a bit. Um, the outcome of this step, uh, image scanning and signing, would be to uh, check in a new Kubernetes deployment file to GitOps. Um, so as soon as uh, GitOps uh, identifies a change in the deployment file, uh, it goes, the, the Argo CD goes ahead and deploys that Kubernetes deployment file to 
or Tanzu Kubernetes cluster, right? Make sure that it is in sync with the new version, right? So I'm going to show that as well. Um, and then once that deployment happens, um, so we use Canary deployment uh, for uh, for the new version rollout. So what it does is it goes ahead and creates a new uh, one brand new container, and uh, the container will receive partial traffic to our application. Um, and then uh, you know once uh, it is up and running, our Prometheus and Grafana and Istio service mesh will collect the metrics information from that Canary service. So to make sure that the application is error-free, uh, if it is error-free, it you know in the next step we are going to automatic automatically promote that particular deployment. Or if we have any issues with the metrics, like you know we introduce the timeout, right? So that timeout it automatically queries Prometheus and see that the application having is having an issue then it automatically rolls back. So we'll see, we introduced an issue. So we'll see that according to our workflow, it should roll back. Um, I'm crossing my fingers. We'll see how it goes. So um, since we talked about all these steps, right? So let me go to each and every step and show you what happened underneath the hood, right? So we have seen that, you know, change has been pushed. So now we need to see the build process. So let me go to my command line, and I have um, my build service running. And if you see that I have a build that is successful, that's uh, a build number 97. So I want to look at the logs of this build, make sure that it, it did whatever what it's supposed to do, right? So I told you there are a couple of important things that happens during this process, right? So number one, uh, it takes that base layer, the secure base layer um, powered by cloud native build packs, and then it layers uh, your application code. So in this process, the only thing that changed is the application code, and um, um, it, it, it layers, it, it keeps the other layers intact, and it introduced only the application layer. So that is the power of Tanzu Build Service, right? So if you think about running hundreds and thousands of containers in production, and you have, if you have a CVE that got detected and you need to replace one layer in those hundreds and thousands of containers, uh, so you need something like Tanzu Build Service to you know, take care of that scale, right? So this is one of the biggest disadvantages of Tanzu Build Service. So once uh, this whole process of building the container is done, um, the outcome of this, build, of, this, of this build process is to kick off a uh, test container so that um, you know it goes and uh, tests all the functionality using JUnit and also it does integration tests. So this, um, if I refresh, it did execute it. Um, all three jobs got executed successfully. So a test container, as you know, it tests all the code. And the next, the outcome of the test container is to kick off the sign container image job. So I want to go ahead and show you what happened behind the scene, right? So if you see, um, it successfully signed uh, our, our image and it pushed to our Harbor registry. So if you see, um, so we have a new tag called signed underscore 23. So if, you, if we go to Harbor um, and, and uh, within our project, um, this is our repo. So we have uh, our, our container image recently got pushed at 246. And you see that um, you know it already scanned, and it shows that there are no critical or high vulnerability issues, right? So this tells you that okay, whenever I push my my container image, uh, it gets scanned properly, and then if I click on that uh, particular image, um, it shows that it the, a tick mark um, shows that it is already signed. So this tells you that um, you know, the container is properly signed and it comes from a trusted source, right? So in order for you to do scanning and uh, signing uh, within Harbor, you go to configuration, there are a couple of check boxes which you need to check and, and uh, hit save and that's about it. So that takes care of your image scanning and, and signing. So one other important aspect of Harbor is it keeps track of uh, you know, all these image pushes 
um, in terms of you know who pushed it at what time and what version, what is the tag, and all those things. This is very useful um, for troubleshooting purposes and, and and things like that. Right. So once uh, this part part of the build process is done, it goes and uh, it, it takes that image and it tags and pushes it to our Git ops repo. So GitOps repo is basically a Kubernetes deployment YAML file. Uh, it looks something like this. So this is our GitOps file. So we have signed underscore 22 as our um, you know, tag. If I refresh, um, now I see that signed underscore 23 because you know, I ran this pipeline, got updated, and the build got incremented. Now I have a new tag. So because I have a new tag, um, you know, obviously, the continuous delivery tool that we use, Argo CD, uh, detects that there is a new deployment file that got pushed, and I need to do something. Right? So it goes and it synchronizes or it deploys that new version to our Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. So if you see, we used to have only one version, revision one. Now you see that revision two as well. And within revision two, we have only one pod, uh, which is up and running. Right? So this is what we call it as canary deployment. So we don't want to replace all the parts before we know that this pod is working fine. Right? So that's the reason why we just put one instance of the pod and we let um, our uh, Grafana, Prometheus, and Istio service mesh take over uh, and, and look at uh, you know, home, whether the application is behaving as expected or it has uh, some issues with it. So if you look at my screen, uh, we, we see that there are some issues. That's why my graph shows that it is it spiked. This is, this is exactly what we want. And in the next uh, step, as part of our build process, this would be the last step, is our metrics checker. So remember, uh, you know, we need to make a, an important decision earlier in the demonstration that um, you know, if we have errors, we want to roll back. If we don't have errors, we want to roll forward, right? So that's exactly what a metrics checker job will do, right? So let me go ahead and kick off this job manually, um, and I'll show you what happens in, behind the scenes, right? So if you see that um, um, it, it queried our um, Prometheus, and it, it knows that there are 20 errors, so it goes and checks last five minutes. What are the metrics? Are there any timeouts, right? So it checks all those, and it comes back that I have, I'm seeing 20 errors, and I want to abort this release because it has issues, and, and it may impact customer experience. So if you look at this command, um, it automatically aborts the application deployment. So if I go back to my Argo CD, um, so right now, uh, the revision 2 doesn't have any um, containers because we successfully rolled back. And uh, since we rolled back, the Argo CD uh, creates a new revision, but all these uh, four containers uh, runs uh, you know, the previous version of the um, container image, right? So um, this, um, this, this concludes our demo. So I just want to reiterate what we have seen so far. So we introduced a, an issue with an application, and then that kicked off an automatic build. So this build process uses secure base layers um, uh, so that you have confidence. Uh, you know that you know, the base layer is secured and you don't have any vulnerabilities. And you, you, you know, kicked off the test container, make sure that application functionality works fine. And then uh, we pushed it to Harbor. Harbor took care of our scanning and signing. We know that. You know, we are getting a trusted uh, artifact out of Harbor so that we can run it in production safely without worrying anything, and that increases our confidence. And then Argo CD deploys a new uh, version of the image, new version of the Kubernetes deployment, and it goes and uh, does it in a canary style. And as, as we saw that we had only one, one uh, container was running. And then uh, metrics collection did its job. It collected the metrics. We introduced an issue. Um, it collected those errors. And when we ran the last step, it, it knew that the application has an issue and we had to roll back. So 
this this concludes uh, the demo parts. I I want to now turn it over to Gabri for conclusions. Gabri, go ahead. Thank you, Prasanna. And now let's go back quickly to the conclusion. And so this is what we saw. And as we can see, the result of shifting left is that now we reduce um, the, the risk because at this point, everything uh, has been uh, um, secured, has been scanned, and everything is signed. And uh, in this way, we have the possibility to maintain uh, developer speeds because everything is, has been automated while still uh, applying uh, rules that help with compliance and security. Observability and uh, measuring are also tools that we embedded over here and also the auditing. And uh, there is no space for configuration drift. Once the code has been checked in, everything uh, happens uh, uh, automatically. Now, oops, the, this is the, the pipeline that we are, uh, uh, that we implemented. It's uh, okay, is uh, absolutely not uh, complete from a perspective of checking for uh, the proper security posture in uh, a running environment. So we didn't do anything uh, to verify the cluster security and to check the configuration that's running. Uh, uh, at the time. So there are uh, other steps that need to be taken uh, in order to move uh, to the next uh, level uh, of security. This was uh, specifically directed uh, to from a um, perspective of the developer experience. And we would like to thank uh, MADA for uh, like inside conversation and uh, also many ideas that we were able to share and uh, bounce with him. And also Kathy Wang that helped uh, with the configuration uh, with the build server. And uh, obviously we like to thank you for uh, participating in this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, have, a re uh, have a rest of a wonderful day. Thanks, you too. That was really great. Um, anyone who's interested can go and head over to the Q&A after this. Persona will be over there, and uh, Maria has another talk coming up next.